today. A funny thing happened. In fact, uh, after worship at Richmond, where I am pastor, I saw to it that I'll be leaving right after I prayed the closing prayer. It's about 12.30. I drove and my first exit, there was a traffic. The temptation came along for me to call Raul or Pastor Hill to say, I may be late, call Pastor Arman. <laughs> but then I made it. It was raining on I-95 and I was asked, I was told by my GPS to take Route 1 north. I drove, I drove, and about 15 minutes, I noticed that that was not the same environment or the same neighborhood that I used to see when I was here. I finally found a place. It was a house. There's nobody there. It was up on the mountain, you know? Do you know what happened? It is because I googled Filipino American Christian Church and it brought me to 320 Echo Drive, Fredericksburg, Virginia. So I had to call my pastor. He called me so early and I said, I can do it. This time I'll not be embarrassed <laughs> as I preach. So I called my kid and said, it's supposed to be FICC. Philippine International Christian Church, and then I called my son and said, would you Google Fredericksburg International Church, Christian Church? And so he did, and it's 11 smoke tree, and I was already close to where I'm supposed to be in. A primary New Year's resolution for me. Whenever I'm invited here, I have to come here the night before. <laughs> But anyway, it's always a pleasure for me to be invited by this family, as probably some of you do not know. You are our mother church. You are instrumental, in fact, in having a congregation ministering uh, where we are right now in Midlothian, Virginia. And so it's always a pleasure to be here because I always feel at home around here. Not so much because the majority, I know most of you because I think some of the earlier members from this church are no longer around. But that doesn't matter for as long as I am here having fellowship with you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Is it not? Okay. Amen. So, New Year. I'll exercise at least 30 minutes each session three times a week. I'll, I'll eat no more than the size of my fist each meal. I'll get, up a, I'll, I'll get at least eight hours of sleep a day. I'll reduce my nagging and listen more to my husband or spouse. It could be that the husband is the nagger in the family. I'll begin my day with the reading of the scriptures and spend some time in prayer. I'll spend less on Skype and Facebook and spend more time with my family. New Year's resolution. Th these are good. These are good and I would say helpful. New Year's resolution. However, this morning what I'd like to do is to encourage you to resolve or commit to be the kind of person that God wants you to be as you prepare yourself for the coming year. It is not new to us to hear that as Christians we're, we're a people set apart by God that he might love us deeply that is and that we might live in accordance to his will 
referred to by the scripture that was read a while ago as holy people. Meaning, we are set apart to live differently in this world. But the question would be, how different should we be from others? The Apostle Paul started out with who we are, our character, qualities of Christian living. He says, as, as God's chosen people, we must first put on Christ-like qualities of Christian living. Put on, as God chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And above all, above all this, put in love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called into one body, and be thankful. More than once, I have heard Glenn, a church member in Richmond who had a terrific accident in that he was comatous for a number of days. In fact, it was a miracle that he was able to make it. He used to be a Marine and the accident took place while he was recruiting, while, while he was in the recruitment center. You know what? <clears throat> this guy, just like if you have seen the first 50 days starring Adam Sandler and Drew Narimore, where Drew Narimore had this short memory loss, <coughs> where he would know you today, but tomorrow he'll forget about you. We have such a church member. But then, as, as days and years went by, you know, this Glenn, despite of the situation, has come to be a source of blessing for a good number of us. It is because of the simplicity of his faith. Whenever we have a Bible study, when I asked the group the question, how do you deal with difficult situation? You know what he says? He would say, you've got to think positive, not negative. Always smile, but always he says that. Of course, that message is for us Christians. All through the Bible, we are encouraged or admonished to think positive or put on the positive qualities of life. Christ-like qualities of Christian living, as Paul refers to here in beginning verse 12. And what we see here are, are qualities of Christian living that not only proves that we have been born in you, but also proves that the seed of God's goodness has been implanted in our lives. So, we're admonished, we're exhorted to put on. If you would utilize a little bit of your sanctified imagination, the, the, the word that, that Paul is using here has to do with putting on of clothes. Put on, put off. It, it's not the switching on and switching off of the light. It, it's putting on and putting off of clothes. These qualities, Paul said, put them on. Put them on. 
And this suggests that the putting on should be done every day. The putting on should be done every morning. As, as God's chosen people, we ought to put on daily these qualities that reflect, in fact, the very character of our Lord Jesus Christ. Each of these qualities, beginning with compassion, could be applied, could be used of the Lord. So when you get up each morning, you start out by putting on these Christ-like qualities. I wonder, how do you usually get up in the morning? Well, some people, especially during winter time, have great difficulty waking up in getting off the bed. I know there are some people who are always ready, to, they can always sleep out of their bed, bright eyed, ready to face the day, challenge the day, come on, give me what you've got. There are people like that, but then there are others who drag along and who would need a strong cup of coffee to wake them up, to get them going. And no matter what time you get started in the morning, however, Paul is saying, put on, clothe yourselves with this quality. When you get up, be intentional, be deliberate, put on these qualities of life. Now, why would he say this? Is this something that he is advising everyone, including non-Christians? No, no, no. He was speaking to Christians. He was asking them, telling them to put on these qualities because they have the capacity to put this on. A non-Christian has no capacity to put this on. It's just but normal for them not to have compassion. It's just but normal for them not to have kindness that, that, that is equated to the kind that God requires. We are asked to put it on because we can put it on. We can put it on because as Paul in 2 Corinthians said, we are a new creation. 